Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we have another comparison video between SOLIDWORKS and Fusion 360. Today specifically, we're going to be talking about surfacing, surface modeling, and what that is, what the pros are and cons for the different programs, and just the differences just in general. That's more actually probably more, more accurately the differences we're gonna be talking about. For those who don't know what surface modeling is, it's very different from your typical 3D modeling or solid modeling, which is what you would be doing for the vast majority of your CAD design. A surface modeling is, uh, and you'll see it a little bit in this video, is taking a plane, which is two-dimensional, height and width, but then you're putting it into the third dimension by bending it or by giving it shape. And you can see that it's still a two-dimensional object in 3D space. And so it has no thickness, but it does have a height, depth, and width. So that's what a surface is. It's really, really useful if you're doing more organic shapes, which is what I did. I modeled something in both SOLIDWORKS and Fusion 360, the exact same thing, uh, to kind of give you a view of what it was that I modeled. Um, this is a pulse oximeter concept that I'm, I'm just kind of working on more just for fun. And you can see this curve right here, this edge, as well as some of these other ones in, in here as well, would be very, very difficult to 3D model with typical just 3D modeling, uh, with solid modeling. But with surfacing, you're able to get those more organic shapes. And the reason why it would be hard is because you actually have two curves, one right there and then one right there, as well as a third curve right there that we're trying to model in together. So I do have a longer video showing me modeling from beginning to end in SOLIDWORKS and Fusion 360. Not this whole uh, whole project, but just the general shape. Um, and actually, I'll show you the SOLIDWORKS file. Yep, just like that. So this is just the basic shape that I modeled in both of them. So to start on talking about some of these similarities, um, first and foremost, workflow. Workflow really was the same. There wasn't really any difference. Um, it just typically how I would go about modeling something like this is I'll actually do all of the different cross section views that are sketched out from like a top view, side view, um, front view. And then from there, I'm going to pull all of the different sketches. And that's really what I did for both of them. And it worked great. It really did. It worked really just fine. And if you do watch that full ver version, you'll see the, those steps I took. Features are pretty much the same. Uh, the extruding for Fusion 360 and the extruding for SOLIDWORKS work practically identical. There's really no difference. Um, there are other features that are very similar in a lot of ways. Uh, and I would say they're the same, but they just call it something else. So in SOLIDWORKS, they call it, um, what do they call it? Let me check real quick. They call it a filled surface. Whereas in Fusion 360, they call it a patch, but they're in essence, the exact same feature. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much that there. Last of all, if we do look at the appearances of them, they really came out quite similar. So this is SOLIDWORKS's version. And then Fusion 360, we have this guy right there. And you can see they look pretty much exactly the same. There are some very, very minor differences though, which for some people could be a really big deal though. So if you look at this end right here, you can actually see the light hits it kind of funny. And you can actually almost see a little cross section or a little T or cross there with almost a wrinkle up at the, the point. I'm actually gonna show with the zebra analysis, which is just a, a, a quick and easy way to see curves and things. And you can see these lines are pretty wavy, which really is not what you want. And even this one right here, you can see it kind of has a goofy little wave. If we turn it to 90 degrees, you can also see it kind of warps a little bit on those edges. And if we were to do that to the SOLIDWORKS file, you'll actually see a very different results. And you can see that's just, it's really smooth. And there's a little bit of warping around the edges, which you'd expect. But other than that, it is very, very smooth, really nice transitions. Um, so there's a little bit of a, of a difference 
and that's kind of where we're transitioning into the differences of the two programs. So the quality is not quite the same in Fusion 360 as there is in SolidWorks. There is also just the layout. If you look at surfaces, like always, very, very typical SolidWorks, there's a lot of features being presented here. And each one of these can be customized quite a bit, a lot more than you can in Fusion 360. Now, there's some pros and cons to that. The pros, you can really customize. You can do a lot of different varieties. In fact, you can make the same thing in a lot of different ways because of that. And that really just depends on your preference. Um, whereas with Fusion 360, it's a lot simpler. I mean, they have a, a lot fewer features. Even when you drop down all the tabs, there's just not that really that many whoops, surfacing features. Um, for a beginner, that is awesome. It really simplified that process. As well as a lot of these features are kind of multiple features like SolidWorks features that have been combined into one. So pros and cons to that. Nice thing is, again, it's simpler, but you do lose some of that customizability uh, that you have in SolidWorks. Another really minor difference that I did notice um, was in Fusion 360, when you're going from a, a surface model and knitting it together and then converting it to a solid model, these lines that are separating these faces are black in both instances, so you don't really see a transition. That's not the case with SolidWorks. SolidWorks, you actually do see right here, you can see the light blue, but let me real quick just stitch all that together or knit it all together missing one of the there we go and you can see the lines change to a black line that's in my opinion it's a really simple thing but it does make a big difference in being able to tell if you're working with a solid part or if you're just working with a, a, a number of surface models so it really boils down to then at this point like what what's the difference what is better and it just depends on what you're doing. A lot of companies don't need surface modeling. In all reality, they just don't. And so it may not be something that's really big a big deal. If you're just getting into 3D modeling, if you're a hobbyist, I think Fusion 360 is just fine. It, it's, it's, again, it's not as good, it's not as powerful, but you can do a lot with it. And this is a simpler model that I worked with. But that being said, I think you can get away with quite a bit with, with uh, Fusion 360. Thanks again for watching this video. If you do have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Hit that subscribe button and the bell icon because I have a lot more of these videos going to be coming up and I don't want you guys to miss them. So if you do want to watch that longer version of me modeling in SOLIDWORKS and Fusion 360, I will have a video right here for that. And other than that, thanks for watching. Keep modeling.